Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to general general knowledge, and the video is how did each U.S. state get its name? And yeah, I've done sort of videos on a similar sort of topic. I've done like how did states get their shapes? How did states get their flags? I'm pretty sure, but I feel like the state name is the most important thing. Like obviously the flags are important; they're all important. The um the shapes etc. But the name is what most people know them from, especially like out of the on. It's how everyone knows them. I mean, yeah, I guess, what would you find, What would you say is more important? The shape, like, sort of the land of the state, the the flags, or the names? I feel like it's the names. I guess land means you can have more, I don't really know what I'm getting into. How did I get into these rabbit holes? I don't know, but, yeah, I'm just going to get into this one. Let's just check this out. I'm interested to see what, what and how certain states got their names. I assume it's going to be some things to do with, like, um, like, for example, New Mexico, just because possibly where Mexico used to be. Or um, certain things will have names like named after like influential figures, I assume. Certain things will be like different cultures, so some sort of French sort of states, like Louisiana, there's French influence there. Obviously, you've got Vermont, which is definitely a French sounding state. I don't know, I said I was going to get into this video and I managed to speak again. Let's just get into this. Check out my Instagram, my Twitter links in the description, same for my Patreon links all there. Let's get into this one. The United States of America are a federal country. Their territory is therefore divided into 50 states. 40 Wait, I'm just gonna say, I'm so bad at this, I'm sorry. Federal country, obviously I've heard this before, but federal country, um, what, what's another country then, like? A unitary system is composed of one central government that holds all the power. Oh, there we go. Okay, I see. So he gives, like, the power is, like, given to the states. And they can make their own rules and stuff, I see. Continental plus Alaska and Hawaii. There's a joke that nobody can successfully name the 50 states in one sitting ever since Friends did an episode where Ross went crazy trying to figure it out. In this video, we're not just going to list that out the 50 hard, states. Though. We're going to that understand why each of them has the name that it does. Let's start with some general characterizations. State names come from a variety of languages. 24 derive from indigenous languages 24. of the Americas, the Native American idioms, Language. although sometimes through European adaptations. 22 other state names derive from actual European languages and words, and the six remaining ones have unclear origins, but we'll get to those in a minute. Of the 50 states, 11 are named after an individual person. Of those 11, seven are named in honor of European monarchs, the two Carolinas, the two Virginias, Maryland, Louisiana, and Georgia. Over the years, several attempts have been made to name a state after one of the founding fathers or other great statesmen of US history, the state of Franklin, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Washington, oh, with man. only the last one becoming a state name. The origin of the names vary a lot, depending on each state, as we'll see now, but there is a somewhat common pattern in many of them, having the initial origin in a native tribal group of the region that led to the naming of a local river, then to a colonial territory that shared the name with the river, and then transitioning into statehood. So now, let's go one by one and understand the known or predicted origin of each state. I posted timestamps in the description, by the way, so if you want to skip ahead to a specific state, you can use that. Starting with the two non-contiguous states. Alaska's name comes from a native language, Aleut, spoken in this chain of islands. They use the word Alaskasak, which I'm mispronouncing, to describe the meaning of mainland, or if we literally translate it, the object towards which the action of the sea is directed. So the place where the waves hit, I guess. Alaska was first colonized by the Russian Empire, who then sold it to the United States. And this native word, Alaska, the name the empire baptized their colony with in the year 1666. Oh, wow. Hawaii's name origin, on the other hand, is less certain. The first year in which the usage of the name Hawaii is registered was in 1879 with the original spelling having an apostrophe between the eyes. The origin is uncertain because there- It kind of makes sense that there's an apostrophe there, Hawaii, but then would that be an apostrophe? I mean, I guess my, um, English isn't my strong suit. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I, I guess my grammar might be wrong, but when you sort of think like, Hawaii, but does that mean there should be a comma there or not? Comma? <laughs> oh God, I forgot what I'm even talking about. Oh, the original dude. spelling having an apostrophe. <laughs> Oh no! An apostrophe. 
I actually passed English. I do not know how. I don't know how. The English system in the UK is done because I called... <laughs> Just get into the, the fucking ice. video, man. The origin is uncertain because <laughs> oh, there are God. two hypotheses. One is it coming from Hawaii, meaning place of the gods, the mythological homeland of the Polynesians, and the other is it being named after Hawailoa, a legendary discoverer of the Hawaiian Islands. Moving to the continental United States, let's start in the west coast with California. California got its name from Spanish explorers, that choosing the name Las Californias for the peninsula of Baja California and to Alta California, the region that became the present day state of California. The name likely derived from the mythical island of California in the fictional story of Queen Calafia as recorded in a book from the year 1510, The Adventures oh, wow. of Esplandian by Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo. In the story, this fictional queen fought alongside Muslim allies, and so some say the name may have been chosen by the author to be similar to the title of a Muslim leader, the oh, Caliph. Wow. In 1846, the US conquered California from Mexico and the Spanish name was kept. California's name is therefore likely to have come from a book. And speaking of books, let me quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's My video, Blinkist. Sponsor, yeah? Are you like me? My guy, he deserves it, man. I'm happy for him. I am happy for him. Shut him. If you're interested, links in the description to his video. You can check all these ads out, man. Getting his money, you love membership, to see it. you'll get 25% off as well. So if you're interested, click the link in the description to try out Blinkist. Next to California is Nevada. Also having been named by the Spanish, most of these south slash west states were first part of the Spanish colonial empire, then Mexico, and then finally conquered by the US. The name sort of means snow covered and comes from the local mountain range, Sierra Nevada. Then Arizona. The state's name appears to originate from an earlier Spanish name, Arizonac, which derives from the O'odham name Ali Sonac, meaning small spring. O'odham was a native language. Although some point out that the Basque language spoken in Northern Spain also has the phrase Aritz Ona. Really? The, the ba I mean, to be fair, the colors here of the flag are actually like, I feel like they're the Basque colors, aren't they? That's wild, actually. Basque, like maybe there's some Basque, Basque influence in the name. Obviously, this isn't about the flags, but you can see the influence possibly there. Obviously, this isn't to do with that, but that is kind of crazy, actually. It's the Good Oak, as there were numerous Basque sheep herders in the area, but it's more likely that the origin is the native word. Apparently, there okay. is a misconception that the state's name originated from the Spanish term Arida Zona, meaning arid zone. This is considered a case of folk etymology and is not accurate, but if there's no official record, who knows? Further north is Oregon. The name origin of Oregon is disputed and therefore unknown. Spanish. There are four options. Native it having Portuguese Spanish, French. native, Portuguese, or French origin. The Spanish could have named it after the word oregano, referring to a plant which grows in the southern part of the region, after a stream in Spain called the Ajoyo del Oregon, or after the term orejon, meaning big ear, with the J then turning into a G. The native origin possibility is evident in a 1765 petition to the British king. Robert Rogers, an American colonial frontiersman, wrote, and from thence the river called by the Indians, Oregon. In 1904, the local Sunset Magazine argued the name came from a Portuguese explorer who had named it Ove Agua, meaning hearing water, after the sound the waterfalls made, with that name then being adapted to Oragua and then Oregon. This one seems kind of a stretch, to be honest. Or the French possibility, where the name would come from the spelling of a local river as Waricon, although this would likely be an adaptation of the native name we saw in the second option. Above Oregon is the state of Washington. This one is pretty straightforward all we need to do is look yep. at the flag it's named after george washington whose surname was in turn derived from the town of washington in the historic county of durham england oddly the territory oh, was oh he shout england man I was not expecting that. He named Columbia after the Columbia River, but they found the name too similar to the District of Columbia, the national capital, which itself contains a city named Washington. Yeah, that is kind of so, weird. Washington became the only state named after a US president. To the east is Idaho. The name was initially proposed for the colonial territory of Colorado after a supposed native. I remember, I feel like I remember this, seeing this in the video, like they were gonna like, have different names for those sort of states around that kind of area. Uh, or like Idaho and like Colorado. I swear I remember hearing something about that. It's kind of wild how 
names could have been so different. Term. But when people realized the native term didn't exist, they abandoned the idea. However, it was too late. Years later, it fell into common usage and ended up being proposed for the actual. Did you say Colorado? I meant Denver. I'm, I'm having an absolute stink of Actual today. name of the territory. An alternative etymology attributes the name to the Apache word Idaje, which means enemy. An Apache term was also used by the Spanish to name Utah. Utah, but with a Y, from the Apache term Yuda, was the Spanish designation for the local people, which meant high. After becoming part of the US, the term was- Wait. <laughs> Did I just say dead? Colorado. I don't even know what's happening. Colorado is the state. I just. <laughs> I thought Denver was. I'm, I'm not even just woke up. I've not even got that excuse. What is going on? It says meaning high here. I think I'm acting as if I'm high. What is going on in Adapted my brain? Into English, becoming <laughs> Utah. Back south, New Mexico. This one is pretty straightforward too, yeah. from the Spanish Nuevo Mexico, meaning the New Mexico. In turn, the name Mexico comes from the Nahuatl native language, which referred to the Aztec people who founded the city of Tenochtitlan. Colorado was also named by the Spanish in 1743. It roughly means colored, but in this case, it meant ruddy or red, originally referring to the Colorado River and its muddy color. Oh, Wyoming gets its name from the Wyoming cool. Valley in Pennsylvania, which itself got its name from a Muncie word, another native language. This one, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce, and it literally meant big river flat. Montana <laughs> is again super straightforward. It means mountain in Spanish. Montaña del Norte was the name given by the early Spanish explorers to the entire mountainous region of Western North America. It was proposed by the US government for the territory that ended up becoming Idaho, but then changed as they thought it had no meaning, only to be proposed in 1864, once again, for what is now Montana. There were some complaints, again, especially because it was somewhat misleading, since Montana itself is not that mountainous, and the name of Shoshone, a native tribe, was proposed. But the Committee of Territories ignored it and stuck with Montana. North and South Dakota have the same name minus the geographic indicator, named after the Dakota CU Native American tribes. And Dakota is actually also a word in the language of these people, literally meaning allies or friends. Nebraska's oh. name comes from the native Chiwer, specifically the word Nebraska, which literally means flattened water. It was first chosen as the name for the Nebraska River and then for the territory and state. I have to be honest, I was not aware so many states had a native origin in their names. Kansas is named- It does show like the, the sort of historical meaning to them though, and I like that. Like there's actual meaning to the, the names. It's pretty cool when you sort of see whether it's the tribes or whether it's from like other sort of European sort of settlers coming to the country and sort of influencing the name or if it's like the people like the tribes and all these kind of stuff it's just it is so interesting seeing these differences and what leads to certain names obviously you've got like influential people on the history of the country just all these different things or maybe it's like to do with like the rivers and all the or just everything about it. it is quite interesting the Montana one's quite funny though how it's called Montana but there's not actually like you said there's barely any mountains there or compared to like the west side is just not many miles at all. Named after the Kansas River, which in turn was named after the Kansas Native Americans who lived along its banks. The tribe's name is often said to mean people of the south wind, although this was probably not the term's original meaning. In 1827, the Kansas Territory was established, choosing this name for that reason. Arkansas mm. has a very similar name, just adding a prefix to the word, and the origin is also similar. The name Arkansas initially applied to the Arkansas River. It derived from a French term, a plural for their transliteration of Akanza, an Algonquin term for the Kapow people. Akanza is likely also the root term for Kanza, which then led to the Kansas name. Oklahoma is the putting together of two Choctaw words, Okla and Homa. In Choctaw, Okla means tribe or nation, and Homa means red, so red nation, although a rough translation could also be Indian territory. Moving on to the biggest state of the continent, Texas. Texas, Texas, Texas's name origin is in the word Taisha, which means friend in the native Caddo language. Oddly enough, during Spanish colonial rule in the 18th century, the area was briefly known as Wait, New Philippines. New Philippines. Wait, what? That is crazy. Given that the Asian Missouri Territory, Oregon Country, Alta California. 
country was at the time also a Spanish colony. How weird would it be if that had stuck around and Texas was similarly to New York or New Jersey now called New Philippines. Louisiana is again very straightforward as was evident on the thumbnail of the video. It was named after Louis XIV, King of France from 1643 to 1715. When René Robert Cavalier claimed the territory for France, he named it La Louisiane. So roughly, Louis plus Yan carries the idea of related to Louis or land of Louis. Once part of the French colonial empire, the Louisiana territory stretched from the Atlantic coast in the south to just north of the present day Canada border. The territory was sold by the French to the United States in 1803 for 15 that million mind. dollars. That's four cents an acre. This would be equivalent to around 300 million dollars. <sighs> Buying this bit of land $300 million obviously in today's market is absolutely nuts. I can't imagine how much this this land would cost nowadays, but What's after a trillion? What goes up? What, it's got to be like trillions, right? More than trillions. You know, I don't really know how land like selling work is like how land selling like costs, etc. But there's probably some like Just insane things like under the ground here as well like, as oil or whether it's like diamonds or mining or whatever as well as the land and then like the cities here as well that I can't imagine because it's I feel like it's just before the mountains as well which probably means it's more expensive because maybe the mountain region means there's less uh, less ability to like build and stuff dollars in today's money still a pretty cheap price for something that is equivalent to almost a third of the u.s's territory mississippi follows the trend of being named after the local river the mississippi which defines its western boundary european settlers named it after the oribwe word mizi zibi which translates to great river the missouri <laughs> river also led to the naming of the state of missouri and the river itself got its name from the indigenous Missouri natives. Following that method we saw was common at the start of the video, native tribe, river, colonial territory, and state. It is said that these specific natives were called the Wimi Sorita, meaning those who have dug out canoes. The name was adapted and westernized according to how they pronounced it. Moving on to Iowa, Iowa derives its name from the Iowa people, one of the many Native American nations whose territory was within the future state at the time of European colonization. Minnesota comes from the Native Dakota designation for the Minnesota River, which got its name from one of two words in Dakota, Minnesota, which means clear blue water, or Nisota, which means cloudy water. <laughs> kind of an odd choice of words considering they sound strange. so similar but mean pretty much the exact opposite. It is said <laughs> Dakota people demonstrated the name to early settlers by dropping milk into water and calling it Minnesota, which would mean the cloudy meaning would be the right one. Next, Wisconsin. The word Wisconsin originates from the name given to the Wisconsin River by one of the Algonquin speaking tribes. French explorer. I've got a question about the tribes. Do these tribes still exist? Do some of them still exist? Do some of them not exist? Or have they all like been wiped out? Like how, like how is it with these? Like, and if the people like the, sort of the states that are named after the tribes, do, if they are still like around, do they typically live in these states or do they like live wherever? Like it isn't necessarily in these states. It is kind of interesting those sort of ideas to me, but I don't know. Or Jacques Marquette was the first European to reach the Wisconsin River, arriving in 1673 and calling the river Meskousing. Subsequent French writers changed the spelling to Wisconsin and over time this became the name for both the river and the surrounding lands. And then it was adapted into English. When it comes to Illinois, the state is named for the French adaptation of a native word, Ilenwiwa, which means speak normally. This adaptation was made by early French Catholic missionaries and explorers who referred to the local natives as such. Eventually, the state was named after that tribe. Michigan has a similar story, a native name adapted and rephrased into French. However, this one didn't refer to the local population. It was just a term they used to define large water or large lake, Meshigami in the Oibue language. Let's jump to the northeast and go along the coast for the other ones, starting with Maine. The origin of the name Maine is unclear. One theory is that it was named after the French province of French Maine. Again, Another bro, is that French it derives influence. from a practical nautical term, the mainland. And a more recent proposal is that it was named after the English village of Broad Maine, which was the family estate of Sir <laughs> Ferdinando Gorges, the colony's founder. A combination of the last it. two seems to be the most likely. New Hampshire was named by English Captain John Mason, who had gotten a land patent. So this is like the East Coast, which is where the, a lot more of the English influence is. It, it's kind of interesting again how like the states, where the influences are, 
sort of vary. I know Vermont's up here as well, which obviously isn't English in To establish but. a colony in the area. After doing so, he named it New Hampshire after the county of Hampshire in England. Vermont's name comes from the combination of two French words, Vert and Mont, Green Mountain. Vert in French means green and Mount means mount or mountain, likely because of the green mountains that characterize oh, the man. state. In fact, the short-lived independent Vermont Republic used as its ensign the Green Mountain Boys flag. Massachusetts takes us back into native origins. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was named after the indigenous population, whose name likely came from a native word, Muswak Shasut. I'm really sorry I'm mispronouncing all of these, but I just couldn't find the proper pronunciation. And this term directly translates to Big Mountain. Moving on to Rhode Island, despite its name, most of Rhode Island is located on the mainland of the United States. Prior to 2020, the state's official name was State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, which was created after the merger of four colonial settlements. In 2020, they finally got rid of the plantations part because of the negative historical connotation, and if nothing else, because it's not a plantation anymore. It's not certain where the original name of Rhode Island came from, but two historical origins are presented as possibilities. One comes from explorer Giovanni Giovanni da Verrazzano, who thought an offshore island of the region resembled the island of Rhodes off the coast of Greece, and the other has to do with a Dutch explorer, Adrian Bloch, who described it as an island of reddish appearance, which was Hodlik Island in 17th century Dutch. This would have then been adapted into Rhode Island in English. Connecticut is once again of native origin. Kinitukut was an eastern Algonquin word, which meant land on the long tidal river. New Jersey follows New Hampshire's example and is named after Jersey, the largest of the British Channel Islands. Really? Oh my dear, I always thought like Jersey, the island, and New Jersey. I, was all, I always had like the idea like, I, I just remember when I was younger, I used to always hear it and I was like, wait, what the hell, it's the same name? Again, this is when I was younger, so I was kind of confused at this point. Now I understand there's a lot of similar names between UK and US sort of cities and states or whatever. Um, but New Jersey and Jersey, I was not expecting that at all. Because Jersey's just this little ass island. And then New Jersey's just this big ass state. I mean, small state in terms of the US, but it's a big state in general, in the general terms. Like, it's probably like a thousand times bigger than that island. But that's kind of like, insane. I would never have expected that. And the birthplace of one of the colony's two co-founders, Sir George the Carteret. However, the state was initially created under the name of New Caesaria because the Roman name of the original Jersey was thought to have been this during the times of the Roman Empire. And New York continues this trend, being named after the then Duke of York, later King James II of England, so both after the English town and its duke. Next to it is Pennsylvania, an English writer founded a province of Pennsylvania as an English colony. In honor of his father and probably his family in general, he named Pens it Pennsylvania, combining their name, Penn, and the Latin term Sylvania, which translates as woodlands. Delaware gets its name from the Delaware River. The river itself was named after Lord Delaware, who was the first governor general of the colony of Virginia. And Maryland, named by George Calvert, the first- Maryland is the funniest looking state, man. It's just the most sort of random, unique looking one. It's just crazy. It's absolutely Baron nuts. of Baltimore, after Queen Henrietta Maria, wife of King Charles I of England. Although some Catholic scholars believe the Baron named the province after Mary, the mother of Jesus. Virginia was oh, the wow. first British colony in continental North America. Its name at the time meant country of the Virgin, after Elizabeth I of England, who was known as the Virgin Queen because she never married. West Virginia obviously has the same origin, with the West referring to their possession over the Western territories of the formerly larger Virginia state upon separation. Ohio gets its name from a Seneca native word, Ohio, meaning large creek, originally the name of both the Ohio and a leg rivers. Indiana's name is very simple and means the land of Indians or simply Indian land. When in 1800 the United States Congress passed legislation to divide the Northwest Territory into two areas, it named the western section the Indiana Territory, perhaps to differentiate it from the east where further colonization by Europeans had taken place. Moving to Kentucky, in 1776 Virginia's col- Named after the chicken, right? <laughs> what is it? How did Kentucky Fried Chicken get so big? <laughs> this is irrelevant, but like, is it is it just because of KFC? I assume KFC was obviously made in Kentucky because it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. But what is it like? How did they just suddenly just create the best tasting chicken? 
I don't even know why I'm coming to this, but it's just, it is actually something that I'm wondering, like, how does this even happen? It's just the most random sort of sport, just in the middle of, like, just here somewhere, just the best chicken was created, I don't know. I don't know why I find it so cool. The colony included most <laughs> of England's say. claims in North America, and the counties beyond the Appalachian Mountains became known to Europeans as Kentucky County, named for the Kentucky River. The origin of the name is uncertain, but probably based on an Iroquois name meaning on the meadow. In the two native languages of Mohawk or Seneca, it was said as Kentucky or Gedake. I love how there's these translations from like um, certain like languages through like tribes or like yeah whatever it is and it's sort of been it's the same kind of name now but it's sort of been like translated into english i do find it quite interesting it's cool it's, it is quite cool but i don't know if it's like one of those things that's like people wish it wasn't like maybe if they liked it like how it would be if it was like how it was here if you can't see what it is just, but ken had to or how like how the tribal languages spoke it maybe people prefer that but i do find it kind of interesting or really interesting how it's sort of converted but it's still the same just in like the English language. Respectively. Others have suggested the term Kenta Aki, which could have come from an Algonquin language. Tennessee's name comes from the local Cherokee too, which had a village called Tanazi, located on a river with the same name. The meaning of this name is unknown, although some accounts suggest it meant something like meeting place. Moving to the Carolinas, North and South Carolina were one colony, Carolina, until 1729. By 1663, King Charles II of England granted a charter to start a new colony on the North American continent, and apparently he ordered it to be named Carolina in honor of his father, Charles I. Alabama was named after the Alabama River, which in turn was named by the Europeans due to the native Alabama tribe. In the native language, the word for a person of this specific native lineage is also Albamo. Georgia was named after British King George II. It is the feminine Latin form of George. It was also a reference to Saint George, whose name was derived from the Greek word Georgos meaning farmer from ge which is earth and ergon which is work and finally florida was named by the spanish in 1514 spanish, yeah. from the spanish is that the oldest one then the oldest named one or the longest the state of the, the name for the longest amount of time nearly 500 and seven years 507 years Mister florida often referring to a place's abundance of flowers the state's name specifically oh, no. is a shortening of la florida the flowery one or pascua florida flowery easter although then just being simplified to florida it is the oldest surviving european given place name in the u.s the United States also have some territories in a federal district. Very quickly, the name origins of those are in Washington, D.C. or District of Columbia. The name comes from Christopher Columbus, the famous European navigator. Oh. American Samoa oh, wow. is composed of two parts, Sa meaning sacred. This is going to sound stupid. How do Americans see Christopher Columbus? He's seen as like a bad, bad guy, right? Like, I assume that's the case. Like, he's seen as like one of the worst guys but again i don't really know because i know he was like a real he was a bad guy to say the least but i don't know if like, in the u.s he's seen as that or if for some reason he isn't i don't really know if this might come across as such a stupid question but yeah i don't know i just want i wonder sort of how that seen because obviously he's got the name influence there so maybe he's not but I don't, I don't know. And Moa, meaning center, so the name can mean holy center. Alternately, it can also mean place of the sacred Moa bird of Polynesian mythology. Guam comes from the local Chamorro language, specifically the word Guahan, meaning what we have, a designation for the island first used in the Treaty of Paris of 1898. The Northern Mariana Islands were named by Spain in 1667 Spain after again. Queen Mariana of Austria. Puerto Rico comes from the name the Spanish gave to the island in 1493 meaning rich port. Oddly enough, the island was originally named San Juan Batista after St. John and the capital city was named Puerto Rico, but eventually they switched the two. The island became Puerto Rico <laughs> and the capital San Juan. The That's U.S. Crazy. Virgin Islands were also named in 1493, Islas Virgenes, the name Christopher Columbus gave to them upon European discovery. And finally, the many U.S. outlying islands have various origins. Baker Island and Wake Island, the Johnston Atoll and Kingman Reef were named after sea captains, Jarvis Island was named after three people, all named Jarvis, who discovered the island apparently. Midway Atoll was named for its location being approximately halfway between North America and Asia. Howland Island was named after a whaling ship, and the Palmyra Atoll was also named after the locally shipwrecked USS Palmyra, while Navassa Island comes from the Spanish term Nava, meaning plain, since the island is very flat. So, that is the origin or supposed origin of each US state, territory, and federal district's names. Do you like the 
state names or should some of them be renamed? Also, if new states are to exist, what should they be called? Should they maintain whatever the territory's name is now or create a new one? Leave a comment letting me know and I will see you next time for more general knowledge. That's a question I have though. Is there like in, in the US, is there sort of any like sort of, I, um, not ideas, is there like any sort of conversations or like votes or whatever it is to like have certain state names changed? I guess there has been cases recently. I don't know how recent. I guess there has been cases where there's certain states sort of wanting to change their names. And has it like been close? And when was the last name change actually? I want to see this. When oh, was the last state Another proposal to rename the state of Boris. Eh? Is the United States changing its name? What the hell? Um, this isn't going to be states, is it? It's going to be like cities. No, nah, it doesn't say. Maybe not then. Maybe, I guess I guess not. But um, yeah, I, I just wonder that because I guess maybe some states would have that, but I don't really know. So basically, most of the West has just misspelled Spanish words. <laughs> if you simply put. And I, just, I do always find it so interesting how sort of the um the West is so like sort of the states are just so sort of like direct like you sort of well, let's just go back like you like they're just sort of like squares and blocks but then you go to the East and it's just like some like nimble looking ones they're small they're quite big then you've got like the ones like um Maryland which is just like this and I don't know it's, it's just quite interesting but I do just find looking at these sort of maps so like when I love these sort of geography videos man geography slash history videos. I find them so fun. False Florida was named after the famous rapper. <laughs> oh, mate, when I, was, when I was a kid, the amount of jokes I used to make about Florida and Flo Rida, mate. I was the class clown, mate. I was the class clown. I always thought Utah came of Ute Indians. As, an, as a Texan, we were taught it was a Caddo word, but it was Teas. Where do you live? Oh, I live in the state of New Philippines. So Idaho means enemy and Dakota means allies. It is unfortunate that Montana separates these two. General knowledge had me thinking, I was saying, I can't say this word, Ojibwe wrong this whole time, man, look it up, Ten Alaska, Texas used to have a lot of water, um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one again, I love doing these sort of geography slash history videos, and if you have any more out there, please let me know, because I do just enjoy these videos, but yeah, suggest some more things you want me to see, and until next time, like, subscribe, peace.